After being closed for more than a year, it's so nice to finally be back here. Seven Tubs has always been a place I enjoyed visiting, whether it be to go snorkeling, hiking, or just to take some pictures. But over the last few years, it's been getting more and more crowded and overrun with people. Well, in 2023, it was actually closed for the entire year. It was not open to the public. No one was allowed to visit. That's because it was said that there were some changes taking place. Finally here, April 2024, Seven Tubs has reopened to the public. And I'm here to see what changes have taken place and also to revisit some of my favorite areas. If you'd like to see what they are, then all you need to do is come along with me. Now, when I turned onto the road off of 115, one of the first things I noticed was that the road is freshly paved. There's brand new blacktop, so it's nice and clean and smooth on the way down to the parking area. Along the way down, there was some equipment that was still, I guess, staged there, whether they're still doing some wrap-up work or just haven't removed it yet, but you were able to bypass that, just continue straight down to the parking lot. And that brings me to my next highlight is that the parking lot is now paved. It's always been a dirt gravel parking lot. And if it ever rained, you know, obviously it gets muddy. And especially if you are swimming or get your feet wet, you're tracking dirt into your car. While the parking lot is freshly paved, they do have handicap section and all the spots are lined and they do have arrows for which way to come in and come out. So brand new pavement on the way down the road, brand new paved parking lot. But there's another huge improvement just across from the parking lot. Are you ready for this? Ta-da! They now have public restrooms. This has never been here before. There's never been any type of bathroom facilities here. Maybe on a rare occasion they'd have a porta john, but they actually have permanent bathrooms here. And I guess I'll give you just a quick look as to what they are like since they are brand new. So here it is. You have a mirror in here, hand sanitizer, plastic throne, changing station, skylight. So it's not a bathroom that you flush, uh, I should say a toilet that you flush. It is more like a porta john, but it's more of a permanent fixture. It's in an enclosed space. You're protected from the elements and they do have two of them here. So that is a fantastic addition. And it's right here, just across from the parking lot. Something I want to point out is this gated section right here, just at the edge of the parking lot. It is posted that it's open to Bureau of Forestry authorized vehicles only. This may or may not go down to what is known as the Laurel Run Number 2 Dam Reservoir. That's a dam reservoir that was decommissioned, I believe, last year, if I'm not mistaken, and they turned it into a wildlife sanctuary. And it was reported that there was going to be a trail or something connecting seven tubs to that area. Now that area is open to the public now. I haven't done a video there yet, but I do plan on doing it. But it's a former dam reservoir and reportedly this road would take you to it, whether it's gonna be open in the public, I'm sorry, in the future to the public, or they're gonna create a separate access point. That's to be determined. But I want to point it out that this may or may not be access to that reservoir area, which is now a wildlife sanctuary. As we make our way up behind the bathrooms here, the trail is paved here, which I believe it always has been, if I'm not mistaken. This is nothing new as far as I can recall. It does look like it's a little bit older and weathered. And I don't think any new trails were created, from my understanding, but they did fix up some of the areas. And one of the things I can notice straight away is right ahead of us here, there's a new rock wall and steps of sorts, and a looks like a new railing set on the bridge here. So let's check that out. Looks like we do have some fresh stonework put in place here for a retaining wall of sorts. And steps leading up for this section of the trail. This is a yellow blaze trail as seen by the yellow blaze on the, on the tree there. And this bridge, I don't know if this is brand new or not. It may just be freshly stained or it may be a completely new bridge. It does look new to me, at least. I could be wrong. If you guys know otherwise, feel free to let me know. But the bridge at least looks fantastic, whether it's new or not, at least has an updated look to it. 
I really miss that site. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the problems that was plaguing this area was it was being overrun by people. And there was, in recent years, a lot of out-of-towners coming here. And what was happening is that there was a lot of garbage being left behind. And that's the one thing I'm not seeing yet, is there's no trash receptacles, no garbage cans, no nothing as far as places to put your trash, which hopefully they rectify that problem. But I haven't seen anything out by the bathrooms. And there's even a sign on this bridge here saying there's no trash receptacles out here. If you bring it in, to bring it out, which is common sense. But getting back to my point is that people were bringing in trash, you know, coolers full of stuff, and they were leaving their trash behind, whether it be beer cans, food wrappers, uh, toiletry products, they were just leaving it wherever they were. People were also bringing loud stereos and boom boxes so you could hear music playing, even if you didn't want to hear it, they were playing it so loudly. And people were drinking and, you know, having a good time in general. But when you have hundreds of people here from different parts of the state or different states, obviously some issues can arise, but more or less it was the trash issue. You know, things were just getting worn down as far as trails. And it was just starting to look like not so nice and pristine as it normally does. Obviously, videos like mine and others who have done them here does publicize this place, but it's also websites, uh, TV stations that advertise Seven Tubs as a great place to visit, which it is. It's a fantastic place. And like I said, you could do numerous different things here. But if the problem does persist after this closure for one year, and reopening with these new changes. They have sunk a lot of money into this. If the problem still persists with trash and you know issues with people and other things, I wouldn't be surprised if they started charging admission to come here or some kind of fee or some type of um, limit for how many people could come here in the summer months when it's peak time. Hopefully that's not the case. This is a natural area for the most part and it's a really beautiful, pristine area just outside of Wilkesbury easy access off the road but i just hope fingers crossed that things do improve as far as people that come here they show the respect that it deserves if they do bring in any trash they take it out and that it doesn't become an area that is monitored closely or even we have to pay to come here that would just kind of take the enjoyment away from it see a lot of gorgeous nature's carpet over there there's an abundance of it here and here is our look at some of the tubs now I have done numerous videos here, which will all be linked down below in the description, including me sliding down those tubs, which is a lot of fun. Slightly dangerous, but a lot of fun. I've also snorkeled a lot of the pools here and found numerous pairs of sunglasses and goggles and other things of the sorts, even some coins. But this is your first look at the tubs. As you can imagine, hot summer days, this is a really popular area to cool off. And on top of that, the tubs do lead down to a little pool area down there and a rock slide where people actually sit down on their butts and slide down the rocks into the, the creek down there. So numerous areas to kind of cool off. Also a really popular area down there for people bringing their dogs to kind of splash around and play, even cool off or get a drink. We will get down there in a little bit. There's my shadow waving hello to you. Make sure to wave back. It's a nice area down there. Um, but there is numerous things to see, numerous trails in different directions. And I do want to take you up this trail here because there's a few things up there that I do want to share with you once again. This is also a yellow braze, yellow braze, yellow blaze trail. And we're going to head up that direction and show you a few things further up on top. Are you ready to do a little bit of hiking? If so, let's watch your footing and come along with me.
We're making some pretty good progress. Not much farther to go. You doing okay? All right. What I brought you to is one of my swimming holes, or should I say snorkeling holes. It's also a jumping area for people as well. So that rock face right there, people do jump off of there into this nice clear pool of water. Now it does get around probably five, maybe five feet deep at the deepest. Barely deep enough to jump into, but certainly deep enough to snorkel around, wade around, float around. It's really beautiful down there. There's also some fish down there too from what I remember. It is a little bit dammed up here which does form that pool. But we need to keep going further up following the water. There's more to see. We're further up the trail, further up the stream now and we're at my next favorite area along the section of the trail and it's right here. This is a really nice pedestrian bridge that crosses over the water. And I enjoy this for a few reasons. The first thing I wanna point out is that this is a loop area. So we started down there near the main bridge, overlooking the tubs. And if you remember, just before that bridge area, I was showing you the retaining wall that was freshly hand stacked. And it says Yellow Blaze Trail. Well, that would be this side over here. It's Yellow Blaze here. We also came up Yellow Blaze on the other side of the bridge, so it's one loop. Both bridges are basically your starting and ending point. So no matter which direction you come up or which side you come up, you just continue right around and it'll take you right back down. So it's not a trail you get lost on. It's really easy to navigate. But I like coming here to this bridge because it offers you a different vantage point than what you see from the trail. You're actually able to stand out over the water, get some views downstream, upstream, but it's a great photo spot. You can come here, you know, whether yourself like I am today or with your friends or family, come up here, get a photo and just kind of take in the sights and sounds and you're away from most of the people. Not a whole lot of people come up this far. So you do kind of have it to yourself at certain times. Right now, I am the only person up here, but we have one more area to check out. We need to go up a little bit further because up there is something big, dark and requires a flashlight. And we're checking that out next. All right, we're just about there. Got a low obstacle. I see a duck. And we arrived at our final location in one of my most favorite areas along this section of trail. And it's none other than a culvert. One of my favorite things to explore is a culvert. This one is really nice, completely made out of stone. And it's here because up on top is a rail line. I, I believe it's Reading and Northern, if I'm not mistaken. But this culvert does run through the mountain here. I have actually passed through it, made a video of it. There's actually a few culverts here at Seven Tubs. There is three that I know of off the top of my head and I have explored all three of them. So. If you are in this type of stuff, you can certainly come here and do it. It's uh, running a bit high today, so I can't really go out too far. But yeah, there is a look through it. Normally, like I guess if you cross through it, sometimes may want to have a flashlight, but it's basically a waterfall coming down uh, the, the bedrock there, and then pulls up and makes its way out. There we go. You also feel a nice cool breeze coming through here and the sides are adorned with none other than some nature's carpet. Or in this case, nature's wallpaper. 
Normally I'd get closer and show you a good size comparison. Not gonna happen today, the water is just running too high, it's too cold, and this is, these are the only exposed rocks that I could find close enough without getting my feet wet, but here's my shot I always do. back down here and now we're below the bridge. And I think I have confirmation that this is not a new bridge. And the reason I could say that is because underneath there is some graffiti. Either this is a new bridge and somebody already graffitied it up or they just stained it and that's been there all this time. But here's also another view looking at the same tubs we saw from the top side. Trying not to lose my footing. Nice deep pool of water. That water's moving today. When I slid down these slides and tubs, it wasn't moving quite that fast. But where we're headed now is down to the slide area and the pool area. That's the money shot right there. Got everything in view. Got the pool of water right in front of us. The falls of the slides coming down. The greenery of the trees, nature's carpet, and the bridge. Make sure you stay tuned for my photo montage as I am capturing photos along the way. But for those who are not daring enough to go down the slides, there are numerous pools like this. I did show you the one further up where people do jump into it. This one's nicer to wade around in. This one here, not nearly as deep, maybe only a foot deep. And then you do have the slide right here where people do slide down this rock slope, I guess you wanna call it. And the water is actually heading down through another culvert. That culvert was sketchy. I didn't go all the way through that one, but the second of three culverts is down there. This is what you call a natural water slide. And it doesn't come without expense because if you slide down this, although it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be painful as well. It's hard to see through the water, but there's little valleys and hills. So you're gonna kind of get airborne and slam into some crevices and dips as well. And you eventually sl slide and splash right down into the main creek right there. I never did it, so I'm not really a, a fan of intentionally hurting myself, but I have watched numerous people go down it, and when they splash down at the end, you can see the look on their face, like, ooh, that hurt. I believe it. Now I do have one more spot up here I want to take you to, just over this hill. Before we go there though, I want to share a couple things with you. Number one is that not only is it great to be back here, but number two, it's great to be here without hordes of people. I know in the warmer months that's going to change, but right now there's maybe a half dozen people here. I've walked you know, the trail so far, showed you guys the different things, I've only come across two, three people, a couple that were leaving when I first got here, so I don't think a lot of people know that's open yet. And I only learned about it because I belonged to a picture group on Facebook and some of the members shared some pictures showing that it's now open. I'm like, holy crap, it's open. I've been waiting so long to get back here. And I came here just a couple days later to make this video to show all of you what the changes are and what took place. So although it's not crowded now, I am really enjoying the solitude of having this place nearly to myself. The other thing is that this place looks as good as it ever has, better than I've ever seen it. Not only is it garbage free, litter free, trash free. But, you know, they did some upkeep and maintenance on the trails, the parking lot, the road, the bathrooms, all looks fantastic. The people involved in this project, all I can say is job well done. You guys knocked it out of the park. The place looks fantastic. And I'm really enjoying myself right now. Hopefully you are as well.
I do see some cut trees up there as well. They probably cut down some dead ones or some precarious looking ones. But still a lot of nice tree growth here. And we arrived at our final location. And what I'm kind of saving the best for last, kind of, depending on how you look at it. This is one of the larger pool areas here that you can find. And this is basically up from the rock slide, up from the culvert. And you come up here along the trail and you have a pretty large pool. Now I have some something good to share and something not so good to share, at least in my opinion. So normally, you know, when the water's not raging as much as it is and we haven't had rain for a while, this clears up really nice, like almost crystal clear water. So that's one thing. Number two, it's certainly deep enough to swim in or to even float around in if you brought a floaty. But the negative thing is that when I was here snorkeling last time, I think I was actually doing some underwater metal detecting. I saw a snake in the water swimming around. Whether it was harmless or you know venomous, I don't know. I don't care. I just don't like snakes but you can possibly see snakes here in these waters. So it's just something to keep in mind if you do come here and you have either a dog coming in here or children or even yourself. Thankfully, the snake kept its distance. I always keep my eye on it as well. If it came anywhere near me, I would have been running on top of the water to get out of here. Now the trail, at least this one does continue up. You can follow it, tracing the water. You're basically following this bank side here. And of course, you just see some gorgeous natural areas with the water, the rocks, trees, nature's carpet. It's just endless and goes for a decent distance. But since we're here and I do have my underwater housing, I figured why not get some underwater footage. So I'm going to try to find a, a location to kind of get down to. And we're going to get some underwater footage and see what it looks like. Maybe we see some fish. Maybe it's too cloudy or murky, who knows? But let's check it out, because I love doing underwater footage. I'm gonna start right here. There's pretty good visibility from what I could see. Ideally, I'd like to be where the sun is, have the best chance of seeing underwater, but there's no easy way of getting over there from what I could see, but I still may try and get over there after this. But let's start here. I do have the camera rolling. I'm gonna get you guys extended out. Seven feet long. Okay, we are recording. Camera versus camera. And I'm actually gonna sit down and we'll see what we capture. It's not too deep right here. I know it gets deeper out in the middle there, but it's at least one to two feet deep here. Oh, it's actually underwater current. Yeah, I can feel it pulling away. Like if I let go of the handle, it's gonna get pulled in that direction. There must be an underwater current or like a riptide or something. I wasn't expecting that. I don't really wanna go for a swim today to, to recover it. There's where I am. I'm gonna slowly pan to the right. The problem with this is that there is something underwater, whether it be a physical item or wildlife like fish, I don't know it until I watch the video back. So I could be passing right by them. And then when I do watch the video during editing, I'm like, oh, I wish I knew that was there. I would have stopped and paused on it. So if you ever do see that happen, that's why. I just have no control over what I'm seeing until I play the video back. Right now the water is actually pushing the camera that way, closer to the falls. And I lift up and that's where I am.
All right, I'm gonna see if I can find my way to the other side where it's sunny over there. They really do want to get some footage over there. So I'm gonna see if I can find a safe way to cross and hopefully we'll pick up over there. All right, I'm gonna try and do a probably dumb move here, but I'm gonna try to jump over the water to this rock and the rock is slippery. So I'm gonna have to kind of leap and grab onto it. That was dicey. All right, I think I could get most of the way over here. I think I can only get to this rock right here. The water's just too high today. A few moments later. This isn't really necessary, but I'm taking my socks and shoes off. I'm just gonna get in the water. All right, shouldn't be a problem now, except it's gonna be really, really cold. Whew. Oh yeah, it's cold. These are so slippery, wow. All right, I'm gonna have to stay in the water. This is the best I could do. It's too shallow on the shore. And this is a smooth rock. That was so painful walking over here. God, my feet are killing me. But this should allow for us a much better visibility. All right, we're rolling once again. I'm gonna crouch down and I'm gonna start right to left. So we'll end up facing your direction. Water is relatively clear, it's clearer than I thought it was gonna be. It's super cold, my feet are already getting kind of numb. You can tell it does kind of pitch down towards the middle. I say in the middle, I think from what I remember, it's over my head, or at least close to it. Doing a nice slow pan here. I don't see anything with my eyes as far as fish or anything like that, but I probably spooked them walking over here. And there we are. Standing in a really cold creek in April, not the best feeling, but the things I do for my own curiosity and for you guys as well. No, you didn't ask me to do it. I volunteered to do it, but hopefully you guys appreciate the effort. My feet are throbbing and they're red. That was cold and painful. I don't want to do that again anytime soon. Next time I go in, I'm wearing my sandals or water shoes. Whew. I should have left my shoes off until I got over here. Didn't think about that. Ooh, yeah, that is slippery. All right, I'm just gonna have to kind of sidestep it. I made it. Holy crap, there's people here in bathing suits with towels. They're nuts if they go swimming. They're gonna get hypothermia. I don't see them lasting in the water.
It's cold, isn't it? Cold? Yeah, very cold. Yeah, it's like ice. <laughs> no, I said it's like ice. Yeah, it does feel like ice. Yeah, I was in that pool area. I went in with my feet, but they went numb in like five minutes. Yeah. You're not going swimming, are you? No, I don't think so. I said, you guys are nuts if you do. I wanted to, but it might be too cold Yeah. You have to wait a couple weeks, probably. Yeah. We just got excited. Yeah. It's good to be back here. Yeah. Have a good one. You too. I'm actually here about two hours now, and I realized I could have made just a 10, 15 minute video highlighting the changes here, just briefly showing you the updates and what's new. But since it's been over a year since I've been here, I want to really take it back in and enjoy it for myself. So that's why I brought you along, made a lengthier video, showed you some of my favorite areas. And I just have to say once again, I just absolutely love how it looks right now. I've never seen it as beautiful as it is right now. And it's up to the people to keep it this way. So all we can hope is that people that come here Keep it looking how it does. Whatever they take in, they take out. And that people help clean up after one another because of all the updates, I was really hoping for trash receptacles. Obviously, that's gonna require someone to maintain them, come clear them out every day. Maybe they'll incorporate them in the future, who knows? But having bathrooms is a game changer because there was never any place to go. You basically had to find a place in the woods. Paved parking lot, just fresh and clean and updated and I definitely enjoyed myself, hopefully you did as well. I'd love to know which of my favorite areas was actually your favorite area. Hard for me to pick just one because they're all so unique and beautiful in their own way, but maybe there's a spot I didn't show that's your favorite. If so, feel free to let me know. Also, I'd like to hear your thoughts if you think I should come back and snorkel the waters once again this summer. It's been a few years since I've done that. We have numerous pools, a couple of the tubs and slides. You never know what you'll find. At the very least, we'll get a look at underwater life whether it just be rock formations, fish, or something else. Anyways, thank you so much for coming along for this 2024 look at the newly opened Seven Tubs here just outside of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.